Hello everyone, this is Dr. Jimmy Flores with Jimbok Academy and today I'm going to talk to you about the planning process group and go through some questions that you might see on the PMI exam. If it's not a direct question, which it probably is not, they are close and so having knowledge of how questions are written, how questions are posed to you, and what the question looks like or looks for will help you a ton on the exam. Now I've taken five of these exams now and so I have a pretty clear idea of how those questions are worded, what they're getting at, what they're trying to to test you on and so the point here is to look at it and say look even if I don't have a clear idea I can eliminate two and possibly three so if you know you can eliminate three then you know you're gonna get the, the answer right because there are four options A, B, C, and D and all you have to do is eliminate two to have a fighting chance and then of course if you hit three you're in pretty good shape so let's get started which of the following is not an input to the develop project management plan or the develop project management plan process this is one of our 47 processes in the PMBOK guide fifth edition so let's go through the options A project charter B enterprise environmental factors C, organizational process assets, or D, facilitation techniques. So what do you think? Which one just doesn't really make much sense here? Is it A, project charter, B, enterprise environmental factors, C, organizational process assets, or facilitation techniques? Hmm. Well, you'll notice that three of them, generally you need them to be able to do something. And those are the first three here it's really facilitation techniques that kind of sticks out and it is actually in the develop project management plan process but it is a tool and technique and not an input so an input is something I need to do something a tool and technique is a particular let's just use the word tool that helps you do it and of course the output is what you get at the end this comes from the planning process group PMBOK guide page 72 Difficulty level, not too bad, level one. Moving on, number two. During a project meeting, a team member mentions that the work assigned is too high level and it's making it difficult to understand the requirements. What is the likely reason for this problem? A, failure to plan. B, over planning. C, failure to properly decompose the project. Or D, lack of coordination with the sponsor. So this team member mentions that the work assigned is too high level. It's making it difficult to understand the requirement. What do you think is the problem? Do you think it's over planning? Do we know? Well, this is a little toughy. I mean, it's a little tougher than the other ones now. So failure to properly decompose the project. So let's think about that. The, the uh, team member is not getting his or her arms around the requirements. They don't understand the requirements, so they need to break it down further before you can assign it. Before, and by the way, decompose is in line with the WBS, the work breakdown structure. Anytime you see the word decompose, think about work breakdown structure. So, given that the team member is having a tough time to understand the work requirements, it's likely the scope was not decomposed or WBS to the level where it can be assigned to one person or one entity. So this is the best answer, okay? And it comes from the planning, PMBOK page 151. I gave it a level three because, you know, even if I were taking this after taking the PMP exam and a few other exams, I would have to think about it a little bit. Plus it was situational based. Anytime you see a situational based question, it makes you think a little bit more. So when you get these kinds of questions, revert, to, okay, I need to think through what is the question asking me? What do I need to answer here? All right, question number three. The following is an example of how to use expert judgment when creating the human resource management plan. A, determining reporting relationships based on organizational culture. B, discussing a quality metric for defect rate. C, coordinating a new order with a vendor. Or D, reviewing lessons learned pertaining to the scope of work. So the following is an example of how to use expert judgment when creating the HR management plan. So we need to focus on expert judgment and we also need to tie it 
with the HR management plan. So look through here. How can we make that relationship? All right. So the answer is de determining reporting relationships based on organiz organizational culture. So that is answer A. Answer A. And the reason is because we're tying it to HR. To, so those are the tricky questions on the exam. You need to say, okay, how can I answer this question? What is it? Where is the relationship? Where is that tie-in? An organizational culture is generally tied to, here in this particular case to HR, human resources. So of those listed, only reporting relationship is part uh, to of, the, of the HR management plan effort. In this case, the subject, subject matter expert is likely internal to the organization. So again, just read through the questions. Come from the planning PMBOK guide, page 263, level 2, even though I think it's pushing on level 3 a little bit. Question number 4. The cost management plan may contain all of the following except a, unit of measure, which is staff hours, staff pay. B, guidelines to communicate project work updates, frequency and format. C, level of precision, which is like rounding. Or D, rules of performance measurement, like earned value management. The cost management plan may contain all of the following except. All right, so the answer is guidelines to communicate project work updates, frequency and format. This plan, so let's go back here, the cost management plan is not going to help you regarding communication. We actually have a plan called the communications management plan. This is where you're going to learn about the frequency and the format of communicating, who you're going to communicate with, how often, are you going to use a WebEx, webinar, meetings. This is all located in the communications management plan. So know your plans. There is a page in the pen book that I also recommend, page 78, where it discusses all the plans in a little chart and all the documents. So page 78 for extra information here. But this came from page 199. Level 2. Level 2. But you notice that some of these questions are not easy, especially when you see uh, information in parentheses because it kind of throws you off a little bit. So just be prepared for those things on the exam or those that type of, of complexity on the exam. Okay, question number five, the final one for this lesson. The following is not an engagement level by which to classify stakeholders. Unaware, resistance, supporting, evaluating. The following is not an engagement level, an engagement level by which to classify stakeholders. Okay, answer, evaluating. So the engagement level of the stakeholders includes the following, unaware, resistance, neutral, supporting, and leaving. Evaluating is not an engagement level. Believe it or not, there are questions like this on the exams. They just sort of expect you to know this stuff. So planning, page 402, level 2. Know that stakeholder management is a new separate section in the PMBOK. So there has been a revision, and we're now using the PMBOK 5th edition. So in that, we have stakeholder management. While I was working through it the other day, I noticed that basically what happened, communications management broke off. And many of those or some of those sections went over to stakeholder management. But of course, both of them were refined. So just know that you're going to have to spend some time and you're not going to know all of these questions, answers. You're not going to know them just by, you know, by just hoping for the best. You're going to have to study. The other part is to go through and look at questions like I, the ones I'm, I'm sharing with you and I'm writing them so that you have a pretty clear idea of what to think through. So you're looking for elimination. Now some of these were hard today. Now I get it. But planning is hard on the exam. Planning and executing tend to be quite hard. And I found executing to be harder than planning. So I found planning and monitoring and controlling to be somewhat manageable. But everyone has their own level of knowledge. Okay, well, now we finished the planning, the five questions. Just want to point you to the uh, PM Quick Start, which is our free PMP training. And there is a ton of information there. It's all free, and you can look through it. Even these uh, situational questions that are, are read, 
And I think it makes a big difference to have this kind of uh, knowledge that where someone can go through the question itself and point you in the right direction. Sometimes just having a static question and answer situ uh, a scenario is not as beneficial. Now, we also have PM Now, which is a comprehensive CAPM and PMP training. So if you're looking for more of this knowledge, many more questions, many more uh, inf inf much more information re regarding screencasting like we're doing right now to take you through the nuts and bolts and then give you additional guidance then I would look into those into that product and uh, like as, as I mentioned in the bottom left quadrant there the questions were were I'm reading through and providing you guidance and I do the best that I can to give you those tips you know because I've sat there I've taken five of those exams from PMI so I have a pretty good idea you know the kind of wording and I want to just share that knowledge with you how you can prepare to do well on the exam so go to jimbachacademy.com and uh, this is going to be your step to doing well, passing your PMP exam, your CAPM exam, or whatever exam you, you wish to pursue from the Project Management Institute. Okay, we're good for now. See you later.